Welcome back to the AR-15 Barrel Series. Today, we are looking at a 14.5 inch recce barrel from Centurion Arms. This barrel was provided to me by Banshee Defense, so a big thank you to Banshee Defense for donating the barrel and making this video possible. In this video, we'll go over the specs, then take a closer look at things on the bench. After that, we'll head to the range and shoot some 30 shot groups. Starting with the specs, this barrel is a 14.5 inches long, made from 416R stainless steel, with a one to seven twist, M4 feed ramps, half by 28 threads, a 0.750 inch gas block journal, and has a chamber that is optimized for Black Hills Mark 262 77 grain ammo. A few other things to note are that the barrel has a recess cut into it, which allows for compatibility with Centurion Arms tabbed gas blocks. The logo and barrel info are also deep laser engraved, although the engraving looks a little rough in my opinion. The gas port is chamfered, which is nice attention to detail that I like to see, and the gas block journal has dual dimples for the gas block set screws. Moving on to the inspection, we'll start with the weight, and the 14.5 inch barrel weighs about 2.2 pounds. If we compare the pounds per inch of barrel length, the recce barrel has among the heaviest contours out of the barrels that I've measured so far. Next, we'll move on to some gauging, starting with a throat erosion gauge, and this barrel is measuring at a two on this gauge, which is fine for a brand new barrel. Next is a chamber dimensions gauge. This checks to see if the chamber is at least minimum size of a 5.56 NATO chamber. However, the Centurion has a proprietary chamber, as they state on their website, that is optimized for Mark 262. So I wasn't expecting this barrel to pass this gauge, but it did. So the chamber and throat are at least as big as the 5.56 NATO minimum spec. Next, we'll check headspace with a new stripped JP bolt and Forrester headspace gauges, starting with a minimum headspace gauge. And the bolt is able to rotate, so the barrel has at least a minimum headspace. So we will move up to minimum plus two thousandths. And the bolt still rotates. So the headspace is more than 2 thousandths greater than the minimum. So we will move up to the minimum plus 5 thousandths headspace gauge. And the bolt is not able to rotate. So the barrel has somewhere between 2 thousandths and 5 thousandths greater than the minimum headspace and is well below the max spec. Centurion advertises the gas port to be at 0 0.076 inches for this barrel, which is what I measured it to be with a pin gauge. And comparing it to other 14.5 inch barrels with mid length gas, this is a perfectly reasonable gas port size. The gas block journal diameter was about average compared to the others that I measured so far, which should allow for easy gas block installation while allowing for an adequate gas seal with the gas block. The barrel extension diameter was on the wider side compared to the other barrels, which will allow for a nice tight fit with the upper receiver. Next, I'll use my Teslong bore scope to take a peek at the inside of the barrel. We'll start with the chamber. And as usual, there's not much to look at here. Some light machining marks here and there, if you squint a little bit but nothing out of the ordinary. Here is the throat. There is a little bit of smearing and roughness on the right side of the rifling lands. This isn't too uncommon to see, and it usually doesn't seem to have a huge impact on performance. But for a precision oriented barrel, at this price range, this is something I would prefer not to see. Here is a side by side with a Criterion barrel, which still has a little bit of roughness on the right side of the lands, but doesn't look quite as rough as the Centurion. And here's another side by side with the Centurion barrel new versus after about 160 rounds have been shot through it. So you can see a little bit of a before and after difference there. Moving up to the rifling, we have quite a few things to talk about here. First off, you can see that the rifling has a brownish orange type of color to it. That's from layout fluid. Normally the layout fluid is blue, but due to various reasons, it can get discolored. Anyway, barrel makers will coat the bore with this from time to time to make it easier to see what they're doing. For instance, when we were looking at the throat, it made it very easy to see where the reamer had removed material. But getting back to the rifling, the first several inches past the throat had a ton of little defects in it. With the layout fluid in there, it's a bit tough to see, but they look like little nicks or gouges. Here's the rifling again, after a few wet patches to remove some of the layout fluid, and it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. There's just a ton of these little gouges. Here is a straight view down the bore. The light is reflecting off the edges of the defects, and that's what those little bright spots are. Again, these spots were mostly concentrated in the first few inches of the throat, and then seem much less apparent further down the bore. Here's another direct view of the defects, this time after a more thorough cleaning, and I think it makes it pretty easy to see what's going on. At first, it could kind of just look like it was dirty or debris, but I think this view makes it pretty easy to see that these are little gouges in the metal. 
since the borescope is basically magnified several times, it has a way of making things look a lot worse than what you might think. So these defects are really small, but there's just a ton of them. All right, so to make this a little bit easier to look at, here is a side-by-side -side with the defects and then a clean section of rifling. Both of these are from the same Centurion Arms recce barrel. We're just looking at two different sections of it. Again, the rifling with the defects is a little closer to the chamber and the cleaner rifling is closer to the muzzle. And here is the rough section of rifling after firing and before cleaning. The high spots on the defects are a bit shiny, so they stand out a bit. And this is after about 160 rounds were fired through it, and after a thorough cleaning. And it appears that the defects may have smoothed out a little bit, but they are still there. Alright, going back to the barrel when it was brand new, here's a look at the gas port, which looks okay. There's a little bit of a burr around the edge, but nothing to get worked up about. And here's a look at the crown. For a precision-oriented barrel, the crown looks a little bit rough. Most of the cut doesn't look horrible, but for a barrel this price range, and being intended for precision use, I was expecting it to be a little bit better. And also there's a decent dent in the crown, which I wasn't really expecting. I noticed a defect on the crown as soon as I took the barrel out of the box. It was pretty easy to see with the naked eye and some decent lighting, so that was interesting. Here's a crown again after it was corrected, and it looks great. Centurion corrected the crown after I sent it in for warranty, so we will go over that experience. So I shot about 33 rounds through the barrel, compiled some borescope footage in a private YouTube video, and contacted Centurion Arms about the barrel. I asked if the bore and crown defects would qualify for warranty coverage, or if the barrel was within their quality standards. I waited two weeks, and did not receive a response, so I sent a second message. They sent a reply letter later that same day after the second email. Centurion stated that they did not reply to the original contact due to an internal miscommunication. Regarding my concerns about the barrel, they stated that the defect on the crown will not necessarily cause an issue, but they would rather correct that, and that the defects in the bore were not concerning, but they would take a closer look when I returned the barrel, and would replace it if necessary. I sent the barrel back to Centurion with a shipping label that they supplied. Four weeks after the barrel was delivered to them, I had not received any communication, so I sent a follow-up email to ask about the status of the barrel. A few days later, I received a response saying that the imperfection on the crown was corrected and the bore was inspected and found to be completely normal and just needs to be shot as it takes 100 to 200 rounds for the barrel to stabilize. As an observation, the Centurion Arms website states, quote, Centurion Arms barrels require no further break-in. In the email, they also stated that the barrel was in the shipping area and I would likely receive tracking information later that afternoon. The tracking information was not emailed to me until four days later when the barrel was shipped, and I received the barrel a few days after that. With that out of the way, we will go over the shooting setup and then head to the range. As stated earlier, the Centurion Arms website states that their barrels require no further break-in, so no barrel break-in was performed. The barrel was mounted in a Colt upper with a Psyonix bolt carrier group and Expo Arms 13-inch handguard. The receiver threads were greased and the barrel net was torqued to the manufacturer's specifications. To increase rifle stability, the handguard was fitted with a 3-inch front bag rider, and the stock was supported by a rear bag. The SBR lower uses an A5 buffer system with an A5-2 buffer and Sprinco green spring. No muzzle device was used to prevent possible interference. The trigger was provided by AR Gold. Scope is a 7 35 by 56 that was provided by DNT Optics. The scope is mounted in a reptilian mount that was provided by Danger Space LLC. A Garmin 0C1 Pro chronograph was used to collect velocity data, a Mantis X10 Elite and a Shooter's Global SG Pulse Unit were mounted to the rifle to keep track of rifle stability and detect any possible shooter-induced flyers. Groups were measured using the Ballistic X app. Each group is 30 shots fired consecutively over about 4 minutes. This simulates a match or other practical type scenario where the barrel will get some heat into it and also gives us a decent sample size to work with. Between each group, I used a chamber chiller and leaf floor for cooldown. Distance was 100 yards. Wind was monitored with a ribbon. Point of aim was a small circle at the bottom of the target. Point of impact was set a few inches higher to preserve the aiming point. I'll be shooting four groups with this barrel. First will be two groups with Federal Gold Medal 77 grain Sierra Match Kings. Next will be IMI Razor Core 77 grain. And last is PMC X Tech 62 grain M855. All right, starting out, we have two groups with the Federal Gold Medal. The top group is from the barrel as I received it before the crown was corrected. And the bottom group was done after I received the barrel back from warranty service where the crown was corrected. So we will see if the crown made any difference. Getting to the shooting experience, the barrel felt well gassed. 
Bolt carrier velocity and recoil felt fine. The ejection pattern also looks pretty consistent. Shooting felt fine on my end for both groups, meaning that I don't feel like I pulled any of the shots and that I shot to my normal shooting potential. Wind was pretty calm for both groups. The Garmin had picked up the velocity for every shot, but the Mantis missed a few shots and everything went pretty smooth with these groups. So we will finish up and then take a closer look. Here is my velocity chart for the Federal Gold Medal 77 Grand Series Match Kings, which is sorted by barrel length. This has the specs of each barrel, along with the round counts, ambient temperature at the time of shooting, lot numbers, and the velocity metrics. Unfortunately, I didn't shoot the same lot of Federal for both groups, but that means that we can compare some lot-to-lot -lot variations, and there actually was a pretty significant difference. The first group was faster, with an average muzzle velocity of 2,355 feet per second, and the second group was considerably slower at 2,273 feet per second. So a difference of 82 feet per second. The fast group was shot on a hotter day. With the slower group, it was 32 degrees cooler, which may have contributed to the velocity difference. But anyway, compared to all the other 14.5 inch barrels that I've shot with the Federal, the Centurion is a bit slower. And then looking at the velocity SDs, there was another pretty decent difference between the two groups, with the first group having an SE of 19 feet per second, and the second group at 27 feet per second. Looking at the individual velocity numbers, there is nothing too out of the ordinary with either group, and both groups ended up with an average rifle stability score of 99.6, which means that I shot each group about as equally as I could. Although, I will point out that I used two different scopes for the groups, the first group was with a CV Life Eagle Blaze 7035 by 56, and the second group was with a DNT the One 7035 by 56. Anyway, looking at the groups, the first group looks to have a pretty nice central cluster, but a few shots opened up the group a little bit, and the second group had not as tight of a central cluster, but less of an overall spread. Before going over the group numbers, I'll briefly explain my AZ score which is how I like to evaluate groups. AZ stands for A-Zone Equivalence Distance, and it basically gives you the maximum distance where the corrected group size would still fit into a USPSA A-Zone. I like to use this score because it makes it easier for me to understand the practical implications of the group. If you want to know more about the AZ, feel free to pause and read through the PowerPoint slides. For the first group with the dented crown, 30 shot group size was 2.267 MOA, with a mean radius of 0 0.488 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 289 yards. And for the second group, after the crown was corrected, 30 shot group size was 1.768 MOA, with a 30 shot mean radius of 0 0.471 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 300 yards. And here's my leaderboard chart for Federal Gold Medal 77 Grand Series Match Kings, so that we can compare the performance of the Centurion Recce 14.5 to the other barrels I've shot with the Federal. This chart has all the barrel specs, round counts at the time of the group, lot numbers, and group metrics. I do my best to keep things as even as I can between the groups, but keep in mind that not everything is perfectly consistent. But I am doing the best that I can with what I have. Anyway, the two Centurion groups ended up in 14th and 15th place out of 28 groups, which puts them right around the middle of the pack. I'll quickly point out that the Centurion Arms 16-inch midweight Cold Hammer Forge Chrome Line Barrel that I borrowed from a subscriber a little while ago is in 5th place. And here's a quick side-by-side -side with that group, compared with the two groups with the Recce Barrel. So a bit of a difference there. Next up, we'll see how the Recce Barrel does with the IMI Razor Core. Alright, second group we're going to look at here is with the IMI Razor Core 77 grain. Unfortunately, my main shooter camera had an issue during this group, so that's why we have a different view here. Anyway, this ammo usually does okay. The Federal Gold Medal almost always groups better, but the IMI is cheaper and has a faster velocity. So, depending on what you're looking for, one might suit you better than the other. I only shot one group with this ammo, as nice as it would have been to have before and after groups with all the loads. Unfortunately, I do not have the budget for that. So this and the PMC, I only shot with the barrel after it came back from warranty. Anyway, no issues with this group. Wind was fine. Shooting felt good on my end. The Garmin captured velocity on every shot, and the Mantis also recorded each shot. So we will finish up and then take a closer look. Here is a quick look at the velocity chart for the IMI Razor Core. And here's a look at a graph with the average muzzle velocities from all the other 14.5 inch barrels that I've shot with this ammo. The LMT and the Bartline shot the same lot as the Centurion with this ammo. And again, like the Federal, the Centurion barrel is running a little bit slower. 
but it had a better than average muzzle velocity standard deviation at 17 feet per second. The individual velocity numbers look fine, without anything out of place, and the average rifle stability score also looks good, with an average score of 99.7. Looking at the group, things mostly look fine, but shots 20 and 21 ended up a little bit lower than the rest. 30 shot group size was 2.192 MOA, with a mean radius of 0.560 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 252 yards. The first 10 shot group was 1.2 MOA, which was pretty solid, but the average 10 shot group size was 1.7 MOA. And here is the leaderboard. Keep in mind that this is all done with a limited sample size, so any individual barrel may do better or worse than what you see here. The Centurion Ricky Barrel did a little bit better than the last group, coming in 6th place out of 25 groups, but still falling behind the 16-inch midweight Coldhammer Forge Barrel from Centurion, which is currently at the top of this leaderboard. Next up, we got the PMC XTAC M855. Alright, last group we have with the Recce Barrel is with PMC XTAC 62 grain M855. I am well aware that this ammo isn't known for producing tight groups, but when I shoot at the range for training, or doing shorter range stuff, I usually end up shooting a cheaper ammo like this, just to save a little bit of money. Unfortunately, I don't have the budget to blast at targets 10 yards away with Federal Gold Medal. So it ends up being something like this. And it also makes for a decent comparison with premium ammo to see how much of a difference there actually is. Anyway, shooting felt fine on my end. Bolt carry velocity and recoil felt fine. Ejection looked pretty consistent at around 3.30 to 4 o'clock. Wind was calm. The Garmin picked up every shot, but the Mantis was having a few issues and missed quite a few shots. So we will finish up and then take a closer look. Here is my velocity chart for the PMC XTEC M855. And here's a graph with just the muzzle velocities for all the 14.5 inch barrels. And again, the Centurion Recce is running pretty slow. The LMT barrel shot the same lot of PMC as the Centurion barrel, and there's still a 50 foot per second gap between the velocities. Standard deviation was pretty good out of the Recce barrel though, at 17 feet per second, which is among the lowest that I've seen out of this load. The individual velocity numbers look fine, and the Mantis missed quite a few shots, but the rifle stability numbers also look fine. Looking at the target, certainly not the tightest looking group, but it looks pretty evenly distributed without anything significantly out of place. 30 shot group size was 3.003 MOA, with a 30 shot mean radius of 0.822 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 172 yards. Average 10 shot group size was 2.3 MOA. And here is the leaderboard chart for the PMC M855. Of course, keep in mind that I am not a perfect shooter, and all these groups could probably be at least a little bit better, but I try to do the best that I can. The Centurion Arms 14.5 inch Recce Barrel came in 5th place out of 14 groups with his ammo. So not at the top, but not too bad. And that will do it for the Centurion Arms 14.5 inch Recce Barrel. If you could like, comment, and subscribe to help me grow the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. You can also check out my Patreon page if you're interested in offering further support. And thanks again to Banshee Defense for providing the barrel for this video. I'll see you next time. Later.